Where do we go when we die? While no one can really answer this question for us, I recommend writers read Alchemy of the Afterlife by Linda Kinnaman, where she shares her experiences with life after death as a hospice nurse and as a child. Whether or not you believe in life after death, I still recommend Kenneman's memoir because she combines the nonfiction and truth of memoir with the compelling techniques of fiction to create a novel that truly lingers with her readers. This is Ignited Ink Writing, a channel dedicated to helping writers like you transform your writing so it lingers with readers in the way that Kenneman's novel does. Writing that lingers gets remembered and recommended to others. I'm Caitlin Burvey, editor and writer. I'd like to start with story, fiction, and memoir. Kenneman truly embraces the techniques of fiction. Her memoir has a plot arc. It has characters, it has conflict, it has excellent pacing. It uses these techniques, most often found in fiction, to bring her true story to life. Instead of talking at the reader to tell them her story, Kenneman invites them into her experience. Even her very first paragraph works like a fiction novel. It hooks the reader by starting in the middle of action, in media res. Alchemy of the Afterlife begins, One eye fluttered, opening only enough to allow a view of my own eyelashes. Slowly, like doors rusted on their hinges, I opened both my eyes, ready to slam them shut if anything or anyone was looking back. This peekaboo technique has always served me well when watching horror movies. I've just never needed it first thing in the morning in my own bedroom. This passage creates tension and suspense for Kenneman's readers. They're wondering why she's afraid to open her eyes. It's not beginning with her waking up, it's beginning with her afraid after she's already woken up. Immediately, readers are interested, they're invested, they want to know what's going on. Beginning with a bang like this is a technique that fiction writers use all of the time, and it's something that I'm happy to see more and more nonfiction writers using as well. Beginning in a moment where you're afraid to open your eyes in your own bed is something a lot of readers can relate to. We've all been little kids who heard a bump in the night, and instead of getting up to investigate, we pull the covers up to our chin and we hide in our bed. We can empathize with this fear that Kenneman is experiencing. This opening passage is also effective because it's a scene. She's not just telling readers what's happening. She's describing the moment using all of the five senses and in a way that allows the readers to experience it too. She's showing them what happened. Each chapter of Alchemy of the Afterlife has its own story arc. Each of Kenneman's experiences is also given the time and space it needs to pull readers in and allow them to live vicariously through her. If you're telling a nonfiction story, think about these things. How can you take what truly happened and turn it into a scene and make it read with a plot arc and have conflict and characters like a fiction novel? Those are the types of stories that stick with readers, that readers recommend to their friends and that they want to read again and that they talk about. Those are the type of stories I want to help you learn how to write. Let's move on to dual chronologies. Memoirs focus on a specific time in a person's life. It's more like a chapter from someone's life, whereas an autobiography is the whole book. Alchemy of the Afterlife focuses on Kenneman's time as a hospice nurse, as well as some moments from her childhood. And normally these moments from her childhood would push Alchemy of the Afterlife into an autobiography, but it doesn't because Kenneman sticks to the theme of life after death. These childhood moments that she chooses to recollect are integral to where she is as a hospice nurse. She unfortunately lost both of her parents at a young age, so she experienced death a lot earlier than most people. She was also responsible for taking care of her grandmother in her home until she passed. This probably led to Kenneman becoming a nurse and a caregiver for the elderly. In order to show both these parts of her life, Kenneman weaves two timelines together. For the most part, her childhood occurs in chronological order and the stories of her patients that she tells are also somewhat chronological. So you have two distinct timelines happening at the same time in this book. By going back and forth between her childhood and her adult time as a hospice nurse, Kenneman 
prevents this from becoming an autobiography because an autobiography is generally chronological and she's not telling that type of a story. She's telling the story of her experience with life after death. She's not telling the story of her life. One thing Kinnaman does well with this back and forth, each chapter from her childhood begins with the month and the year. What this does is it grounds the reader in the timeline. It lets the reader know where they are in time and space. If you're telling a story that's not chronological, you need to think about these things as well. You need to make sure your reader always knows when, where they are, and who's there. If they don't know these things, readers will become confused, and confused readers often stop reading and give bad reviews. So in order to avoid that, put the time and date there, put the place there, have some sort of symbol that indicates who's point of view you're in or what time period you're in. Make sure that you are providing a bit of a roadmap for your readers. Another aspect of Kinnaman's novel that's really important to its appeal to such a wide audience is the fact that she doesn't focus on a single religion or culture's idea of life after death. She's not pushing a set of beliefs onto her readers. All she's doing is sharing her experiences. She focuses on the moments just before during and after a person passes away. She shows through these moments how people don't just end. They do go somewhere. They do linger for a moment. There is something that happens after we leave our physical body. But she doesn't speculate on what this is or where people go. Kenneman doesn't make these experiences fit into a religious box. She's in a way just reporting them. She's allowing her readers to decide for themselves what they believe these experiences mean. This was something she also offered her patients. A new widow felt comfortable enough around Kenneman to say, at night when I put on my nightgown and get ready for bed, an indentation shows up in the bed just where Henry used to sit. I don't see him or hear anything. I just see a rounded dip in the covers on his side near the foot of the bed. Henry died. I know that, but he's still with me. Kenneman doesn't say this woman is crazy, or she doesn't list a bunch of similar experiences. She lets this moment speak for itself, and she lets both this widow and her readers decide what this experience means. Next, I'd like to talk about why an editor recommends Alchemy of the Afterlife. If you are considering writing a memoir, I highly recommend you read Alchemy of the Afterlife by Linda Kenneman even if that's not anything near the type of story you're trying to tell. Pay attention to the techniques she's using to make her story interesting. Look at how she focuses on a single moment and transforms it into a scene. Instead of just telling her readers, this is what happened, this is what I thought about it, she's letting readers become immersed in the experience. She's stringing together a bunch of moments to convey a greater truth. Think about how you can do that in your own story. What moments from your life really demonstrate what you're trying to tell your readers? How can you flush those moments out into a scene and really allow your readers to be in those moments instead of just reporting them? Another reason I recommend readers take a good look at Kenneman's book is because of its unique marketing opportunities. Because Kenneman doesn't push a specific religion or set of beliefs onto her experiences and novel, it can comfort a wide variety of people in their time of need. And it has become what's known as a gift book, something people give instead of a card to people who might be grieving or going through some experience in life that you usually give cards for. Think about what your book is intended to do. What are your experiences telling your readers? Are they there to comfort them? Are they there to thrill them? If you know what your book is doing, you can look for marketing opportunities like this to really make it stand out and to pull in more readers. By studying well-written, compelling stories like Alchemy of the Afterlife, you can learn how to use these techniques in your own stories. Have you had any experiences similar to those discussed in Alchemy of the Afterlife? Share them in the comment section. And for more videos that take apart a well-written novel and show you why that novel is so successful, subscribe to Ignited Ink Writing, a channel dedicated to helping writers like you transform your writing so it lingers with readers. 
because writing that lingers gets remembered and recommended to others. I'm Caitlin Burvey, editor and writer. You can find out more about me at www.ignitedinkwriting.com. And now it's your turn to use the five senses, to build full scenes, to choose your moments carefully, and to see how you can arrange your timeline to ignite your ink.